welcome back to another episode. Um, in this video, I'm going to take a look at this vintage 35mm film camera, the Kodak Pony 135 camera, Model C, that was gifted to me by a friend of mine who shoots film photography. I actually haven't shot this camera yet, so I'm just gonna, if you have this camera, then I'm gonna do a quick overview of how it works so you can learn how to use it, and then I'm gonna go out and shoot with it. So these cameras are super cool. They were manufactured from 1949 to 1959. So this particular camera, uh, Model C was the last five years, so between 1954 and 1959. So this camera is about, 65 years old, anywhere between 65 and 70 years old. So this camera is very, very old, but it's still functioning. It's still in good um, condition. Um, it's pretty interesting. We have a fixed little lens here, f3.5 to f22, and our shutter has a bulb, uh, 120, uh, 25, 50, 100, and 300. So the fastest of the uh, shutter can do is one three hundredth of a second. The lens is a 44 millimeter, um, so it's pretty much a normal view, a uh, normal uh, angle of view. Uh, it has a little um, re uh, gauge here to help you determine kind of your depth of field and what's in focus. So at f16, and it's not exactly accurate, it's kind of an estimate. So at f16, um, if I focus at 10 feet away, anything from about five feet to 10 feet will be in focus. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting camera. Um, I'm interested to see kind of the quality and how this turns out. Yeah, it's pretty neat, pretty cool little camera to take like some vintage looking retro um, candid shots, I think. So I'm gonna go grab some Portra 400 and then I'm going to keep just use the sunny 16 rule if it's cloudy. I might use some of these um, Assisted settings here you wind your shutter on the lens and then it also has a shutter release cable right here So after World War II, baby boomers parents My grandparents probably would be using this camera um, to take pictures of their family with my parents so this is like the baby boomers parents generations camera or uh, grandparents if that's the case but yeah Kodak so yeah I'm gonna try it out and see if it still works I've never shot it before but I think it's an interesting cool camera so let's go try out the Kodak Pony 135 camera model C made from 1954 to 1959 So you just pull this, take your picture, and then you put this tab, and then you can wind it, and then it'll stop. And that's how you know you're on the next one. It's working. It counts down from 30. So you put it on uh, 36, one little mark before the zero. And as you take pictures, it winds it one little tick at a time. So once you're at zero, you're out. And then you um, use this rewind tab to rewind it back up. So the camera is in perfectly working order, which is pretty cool. So I'm actually excited to like just use the Sunny 16 rule, use some of these um, like help helpful uh, assisted kind of markings here to help assist you in your exposure. But they're not completely accurate; they're kind of just averaged out. But it'll be cool. So I'm gonna go shoot it now.
I'm just like guessing on all my exposures. I'm not using a light meter. I'm just using the Sony 16 rule and then kind of just from my experience gauge what I think the light is from because I've just shot so much manual and used so many light meters that I kind of have a good sense of that. And usually I, I've practiced guessing a lot and then I'll use the light meter and I end up being right on or just, you know, slight uh, one stop off. So yeah, I'm just going around the park and I take a lot of images that are off camera. So at the end of this video, I'll have a gallery of all the images I've taken with this camera. So stay tuned uh, for that and I'm just gonna go shoot some more. All right, so I just got back from shooting this camera a bit. I still have some about 12 shots left, so I'm gonna finish off the roll. I would recommend if you load this up, I would start it on the second tick, the second marking um, past the zero on like number two. Then when you wind it three, team, three times, it should start on sl uh, slide 36, and then you can just count down from there. So yeah, I've been, it's pretty sweet. Um, so far using this camera completely manual and completely like instinctual and you just have to use kind of um the markings here to figure out you know what's up so yeah you have to kind of guess my subject is 10 feet away so you focus on 10 but then you're on f8 so you can use the markings on the front of the lens here that anything from uh, seven to ten feet will be in focus at f8. Um, then you can use the sunny 16 rule to determine your uh, exposure. So yeah, it's in great working order. It's an awesome little camera for some like, I feel like I'd take some good candid kind of in the moment um, pictures. Maybe if I was on a road trip or hiking out and about and I just wanted to snap some pics, you know, quickly without putting a ton of effort and thought into my composition just getting the perfect image but more of like a candid on the go um, style of images I feel like this would be a good camera to kind of fit that um, description fit that use so I that I shot using this Kodak Pony 135 camera model C yeah just to emphasize I had to guess basically on the focus and the exposure I didn't use any light meter and because it's a range finder with no um, electronic capabilities to help focus assist, um, you have to guess basically. You just look here, it has the uh, feet from two point or two feet all the way to infinity, little markings 2.5, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, you know, all the way up. So you kind of, uh, I took some pictures of some people and my dogs. So I just had to guess like how far away am I from the subject and after looking at them they look they all look like they turned out really really good like super sharp way sharper than I expected for such an old what seems like kind of a cheap camera but the just based off of the negatives um, the sharpness is like really really good there was like one light leak throughout the whole oh no I have exactly 36 exposures, one blank. I did a double exposure, and yeah, it just looks like they turned out really good. I got some motion blur on a few of them, but most of them are sharp and properly exposed. So one, I'm really kind of like proud of myself and excited that I was able to get the focus, the shutter speed, and the 
correct exposure on a lot of these that just look like really good. I'm also stoked that this camera, you can find these online anywhere from 50 to $100 in good working condition and you can create some awesome images. So I'm gonna keep and use this camera, I think regularly, on, especially on like road trips where I'm out and about where I wanna just capture moments and it's fun to use. I enjoyed using it. I like having it in this other case to keep it protected. So my friend, um, Augie, he gave this to me for my birthday, for my 24th birthday, and uh, this is my first time using it. So I really enjoyed it. I think it's really sweet. I'm excited to get these digitized so I can see the color, um, see how they turned out on a screen. And then I'll post a gallery of my favorite um, 15 or so images at the end of the video. So take a look at that. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of my first look, first use of the Kodak Pony 135 camera, 35, 135 meaning one, uh, 35 millimeter. So it's pretty cool. It's interesting to think that like my grandparents' generation, this was the camera that they were buying and using to like take pictures of their family outings and vacations and stuff. This was like the camera. So still in perfect working order. I'm still shooting with it. And yeah, I, re I really enjoy it. And I'm gonna be using it for some ca uh, candid shots to capture the moment. So yeah, I would recommend it. It's super affordable and super fun to use. So I'd recommend anyone who's into vintage 35 millimeter film cameras and especially fully manual cameras, this would be a great option. All right, so I got my roll back and I scanned all the images so I could see them, um, you know, digitized them. I'm gonna post them on my Instagram. And I was very happy to see how well they turned out. I wasn't expecting them to be so good. And um, it might be my, I use the same exact scanner settings as I do with all my 35 millimeter film, but these, turned out sharper and a little bit higher quality than like any other 35 millimeter roll I've shot after digitizing them with my scanner. So I didn't, in fact, some of the images I even scanned at a lower resolution, a lower color bit um, rate or bit depth that I than I usually do. So I've shot with my Olympus, a Pentax, and a Canon AE-1 and um, different models of those from those brands all uh, SLR cameras and after scanning them they were more grainy and not as sharp as this camera um, when I look at my film even after digitizing even though technical it's digital after scanning when I look at the pictures because of the grain and because it comes from film like I feel more of an emotional connection to my pictures than if I just snap a digital picture with a DSLR on my phone 
and I feel that way with the pictures I took using this camera. Like I feel like they just turned out really well. I like them a lot and I'm really happy <laughs> that they were so sharp and surprised. So my final thoughts, my final review, this is a super affordable, high quality camera that I would re recommend to anybody who enjoys shooting film in 35 millimeter. And if, um, I wouldn't super recommend this if as a first camera, if you're learning photography on, but maybe as a second or later on uh, camera after you kind of learn, just because I was guessing the entire time on my exposure and my focus just kind of based off of my experience already. Um, so that helped me out a lot and I was glad to see that all of my pictures. I got like a close up, some portraits and a close up picture of my dog. And it, he, I like just guessed the exposure and the focus and it ended up being like perfectly focused up close. So I was really happy that I was able to make it work with no focus assist or light internal light meter or anything like that. So I was glad to see that they turned out well because um, I'm not used to guesstimating that much with all my pictures. I usually use a light meter and a SLR that I can look through. Yeah, I'd highly recommend it. I think it's a really nice, really cool camera. This is gonna start being like my go-to kind of 35 millimeter for candid shots where I wanna just capture the moment, make memories, that sort of thing. This will be my candid memory collecting camera. When I'm on a road, ship, a road trip, on a vacation or something like that, I'll just load this up with some Portra or Ektar. I'll probably use Portra though mostly. And yeah, I'll just kind of be my fun little shooter. So I really enjoyed using it. Hope you enjoyed the images. Hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.